Hi, my name is Alice, and today I'm going to be talking more about genetics, specifically the three ways that allele frequencies change, which are genetic drift, mutations, and migrations. So let's get into it. All right, so what exactly is allele frequency change? Basically, to sort of start at the very, very beginning, alleles are just different forms of a gene. For example, in human hair, we have black hair, brown hair, blonde hair, red hair, and whatever else. And each of these different colors is coded by a different allele. So you can think of it that way. And any time that you have allele frequencies change within a population, you have evolution, uh, specifically microevolution. So usually when you uh, look at parents versus children, what you're talking about is microevolution. So evolution on a very, very small scale. But if you have any change, if you start with 50-50 and the next generation is 49.9 versus 50.1 percent of the two alleles, then that is considered evolution. Um, okay, and then you have one kind of uh, phenomenon associated with this, including uh, which is called fixation. Basically, that is the elimination of an allele. So the allele just completely goes away, and I will explain that in just a little bit. All right, so getting more into genetic drift, what exactly is it? So genetic drift is very, very interesting because it is completely due to chance. There is no other reason that the that drift actually happens. Um, it's completely due to chance, and because of that, it affects small populations way more than big populations. So here I have the example of flipping a coin. Um, it's a very, very common example, but if you flip a coin twice, chances are you're going to get two heads or two tails. Um, it's about 50 percent, uh, about a 50 percent chance that you will get one of those instead of one head and one tail, which you would expect for a regular coin. Um, however, if you flip the coin 10 times, 100 times, or 1,000 times, you're more, most likely going to get a much closer percentage than if you just flip the coin twice. Um, and then drift, in this case, is, uh, when you're talking about genetics, is only a limiting factor in diversity. So it doesn't introduce new genes, it doesn't introduce new alleles, it basically only limits diversity. And this occurs when fixation happens. So basically, if you have two alleles, and one of them... Uh, the proportion of one of them starts to increase, 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 and at the same time, of course, the other one has to decrease, and eventually the proportions become zero and 100%, um, then you have fixation. So with drift, the only way that it can affect uh, the gene introduction or the gene frequencies is by limiting the diversity. And the probability of fixation depends on the allelic frequency. So I have another video where I talk about drift. Um, and if you want to know more, you can go and uh, learn a little bit more about that in that video. All right. So the second way, uh, the second method that you can change allele frequencies is through mutations. So mutations are random genetic changes or random changes in the genetic code. So basically what happens is that you have reproduction, right? So you have the parent cell producing a child cell. And when that happens, you need to copy the DNA of that cell uh, once, right? And for some reason, it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes the uh, that reproduction of the DNA will have an error somewhere. And that is a mutation. So it's some sort of change, some sort of error in the genetic code where the DNA is not copied exactly. 
And because of this, it's actually the source of all natural variation. Um, so all natural variation, and this is the way that new alleles are introduced. So unless, you know, in the last couple years, um, we've seen a lot of people who can like modify ge the genetic code. So you can see, uh, you know, GMO corn, especially GMO soybeans, whatever, whatever. Um, but mutations, if you want to do do them completely naturally, they are the only way that you can change uh, the genetic code. And normally they occur at a very, very low rate. The reason for that is because in general, these changes are not helpful for the body. In fact, they're pretty harmful. And so the body has several different methods of editing and making sure that the replication of DNA is as close to the original as possible. Um, I mean, you've heard of the uh, phenomenon where you play a game of telephone or something like that, and the message continually changes as you go from person to person. And the body needs to prevent that from happening as much as possible to make sure that the next generation can be as healthy as possible. And so mutations in general occur at a very, very low rate. And out of all the mutations that happen, the vast majority are going to be harmful and or neutral. So it's completely possible that the mutation will have no effect whatsoever. And what's a lot more rare is having mutations that are very helpful. And that's generally why evolution takes such a long time. Um, but this makes sense, again, that mu most mutations are harmful because a lot of our traits, a lot of our um, characteristics are already uh, optimized. All right, and the next uh, phenomenon is migration. So migration can change allele frequencies because basically you have new individuals coming into a population or you have people going out of the population. I said people there, but of course it applies to bacteria, uh, plants, animals, anything uh, that is coded with genes. Um, and migration is a significant source of genetic genetic variation for populations. And that's not to say that um, the population includes, you know, the world population, because that already includes all the organisms that exist. But uh, when we're talking about a population here, we're talking about a local population. Um, so people in one particular area or something like that. And so migration, when you have people uh, organisms coming in and out, that's going to significantly change your allele frequency. Okay, so that's it. Uh, it's pretty simple, allele change and allele frequencies. Um, I hope this video was really helpful for you. And if you're interested, I do offer my slides and other bonus materials, depending on the video, for free. If you go to that link, I will uh, include it in the description down below. Um, I have some other videos over there that can help you out if you're interested. Um, thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have a great day.